holiday. Yeah, you look like you were ready for an alley. <laughs> you planted your feet. I did. I was ready. <laughs> um, first practice in a week. Did you have everybody? Uh, no, we did not. We didn't have Jay Sean, who was still out, and uh, we didn't have Jabari, who was sick. Um, so. Tai Tai was kind of in and out. He didn't do any live stuff. And then who else is out? Bruno. Uh, Bruno. Bruno Star. Apart from being sick, is there any update on Jabari's ankle? Uh, no, I think his ankle's pretty good. Um, him not being here today, being sick, might help it a little bit. But um, no update, really. It's is he like questionable for tomorrow, or do you have a feel for whether he should I be? I don't have a feel for uh, whether he's flying or not. We're still kind of waiting on that. Coach, with this being such a young but talented team, um, what is the process that you go through on a day-to-day -day basis when trying to determine what your lineup is going to be for a particular team? <laughs> well, I first talk to our training staff and find out who's available and who's not, and then uh, looking at you know, I'm trying to stick with the same same starters as far as Scoot, Jalen, Eric, Jabari, and right now it's Alpi. And then after that, um, trying to be more consistent, but with injuries and, you know, up and down play, just trying to find some consistency amongst the groups. And I spent a lot of time on it. And it's not perfect. There's no perfect science when it comes to a young team who have a, probably 13 guys who could play minutes. And um, I'm playing 11, which isn't ideal either. So I'm playing 11 guys, figuring it out. And uh, hopefully as we go along and we get more guys back, it'll solidify. Alpine's been playing really well. And some of the nights, it's like he scores quietly. The offensive rebounding has been a big deal for him. Um, he gets second chance points. He gets to the free throw line as a result. Um, he's getting more touches in the post and he's getting more touches at the elbow. And we're um, better organized now than we were earlier in the season when he was on, when he's on the floor. Uh, it's an adjustment a little bit to have a post play, to have a post presence for everybody. So um, he's been doing a very good job with it, starting with the offensive rebounding, then letting the other stuff come to him, and everybody else feeling more comfortable when he has the ball, knowing what they're supposed to do. You you hinted at this a bit the other night, the defensive side of things when Al P is on the floor. How much of any you know defensive issues when he's on the floor stem more more from him, you know, just his recognition, his awareness, his ability to move defensively versus the other four guys on the floor, their ability to help when he's in pick and roll coverage, that kind of thing. It's both. It, that's a good point. So it's it's both. It's the his pick and roll call activates everything, right? So he has to be really good with his communication as far as letting guys know that a pick and roll is coming then the reaction into the ball and the reaction into protection. And it, sometimes our protection, like the last game, they were turning the corner. Alpi was kind of like two on one and we should have had a helper in there to you know, not allow the ball to turn the corner. We shouldn't have, expect Alpi to have to stop the ball and the roller at the same time. So it's, it's a concerted effort where yeah, he has to do his job, but everybody else on the floor has to do their job as well. For right now, running a lot of drop with, with Alpi in, on defense, is there a way to maybe work in some like variable coverage where you're still having Alpi in drop, but the other four guys on the floor are maybe kind of switching to keep to keep things, you know, a little bit tougher for, for opponents to just, you know, pinpoint Alpi? Yeah, well, there's, there's a few things to that. Teams aren't running like pick and roll how they used to, right? From the baseline where as he's going up, maybe you can switch into it and then switch. A lot of it is as the defenders or offensive players coming up the floor and dragging, now he's in the pick and roll, right? So we have been kind of toying with things as far as we know the set play is coming now. Alpi, we can switch you out and get you to the weak side. But um, the way teams play now, especially with flow and um, player, five men playing at the top of the floor and then running into pick and rolls. It's harder to get that Jay Sean Tate or KJ or Jabari into the pick and roll instead of Alpine. Got it. Have you um, 
seems like Jabari is getting a lot more comfortable in the uh, mid range, um, the post up, the face up. Is that something you want to implement more as the year goes on? Yeah, I mean, he he just needs to feel comfortable on the floor. So we're figuring that out as we go along, right? Like he had two elbow catches last game. He made one of them and he missed one. And uh, having him on the elbow, not just as a scorer, but as a passer, we're going to explore that some. So yeah, um, the dribble up <laughs> one in front of our bench where uh, he could have pulled up for three and shot a long two with his heels on the three point line. That wasn't uh, necessarily what we're looking for, but he has shown an ability to shoot the pull up in transition as well as give it up and trail in transition. This three point shooting is, it really sets up the rest of his game. People are hugged up to him and they close out to him. So you can get to his drives or his pull ups or whatever off that. Last year when Jalen struggled early, you had confidence that he could handle it, that he was mentally strong. Do you see that with Jabbar? Because obviously sure. he's struggling. For sure, for sure. I mean, he's a great worker. He's super, super competitive. Uh, part of that competitiveness makes him get down on himself at times when it's not nece not necessary. But that's part of being young. That's part of being a rookie. That's part of going through struggles and ups and downs. But uh, we've been here before with, with young guys, and, and um, we know that the recipe is hard work, competitiveness, and a want to get better. And uh, it won't just happen for him, it'll happen for our whole group. There's so much to learn. Is he at that stage where it's just, he's like drowning in all the different things that are new to him? I wouldn't say drowning, but he has a lot of responsibility on him, especially because he's such a two-way player, right? So um, there's a lot of responsibility on him on the defensive end as far as being in the gaps and being a helper and being a communicator and then finding his way offensively Whoa. at the same time. So, yeah, it's a, it's a lot, but I wouldn't say he's drowning. Um, are there things that you want your guys to learn from this crazy schedule that a normal NBA schedule, all right, it's hard, but are there potential benefits in this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I try to turn everything into a positive, right? And that's one of my jobs or gifts or whatever. But this schedule has been really hard. <laughs> so fighting through adversity is one of them, you know, and um, understanding the importance of rest and recovery and um, me being super organized when it comes to what I'm doing on the floor with the group whether we're home or away. So yeah, it's a it's an early lesson that we're learning. <laughs> and we've done a good job as far as like not letting go of the rope at all. We've been in every single game and we're right down to the end. And at this time, teams could have, the team could have just like said, hey, we're gonna lose by 20 every game because the, the schedule's so hard, but no, we're fighting through it. So yeah, I guess that's the lesson to be learned is you gotta fight through adversity. Okay, not the supposed schedule. to hit the rookie ball at Thanksgiving. <laughs> no comment. <laughs>